This is Channel 2 News Nightside with Ken Matz, Sally Thorner, meteorologist Ken Phillips, and sports with Scott Garso. This is Channel 2 News. Good evening. I'm Sally Thorner. Thanks for joining us tonight. And I'm Ken Matz. And ahead on Nightside, an anti-loitering bill is aimed at ridding the city's streets of drugs. We'll have a report. Some former presidents meet with a future president. And in life planning, taking care of the mind and the body, part of the recreation plan. Is loitering a constitutional right? Mayor Kurt Schmoke doesn't think so. Our top story tonight is about the mayor's latest effort to rid Baltimore of drugs. A new get tough policy would make it very hard for drug dealers to do business on our streets. But Nightside Sam Ringgold reports the anti-loitering bill may be unconstitutional. It seems like this that Mayor Schmoke wants to change. People hanging out on corners known for illegal drug sales. The bill introduced in council would make it illegal to loiter on street corners. But tonight, there's a lot of doubt about whether the bill will work. You think it'll work? You think it will serve its, well, its purpose? It'll serve its purpose in, in a sense, you know. In a sense it will, but in a sense it won't because it's only so much they can do about it. You, know? you think they'll just move it from one corner to another? That's all they do, from one corner to another. It raises constitutional problems. And Stuart and, Comstock uh, Gay represents the American Civil Liberties Union. This one, a um, person is behaving in a manner raising reasonable suspicion that the person is about to engage in uh, unlawful drug-related activity. That's a pretty vague description. There are a lot of activities you could be involved with that could make you look like you're dealing drugs when you're not. After the bill was introduced, council members agreed parts of the bill are vague and amendments will be needed to resolve the constitutional issue. I believe that it's a good bill. Uh, basically, I just think that we have to be a little bit more specific. Uh, we don't want to open up the doors to uh, uh, allow people to be abused, but at the same time, there's a real need, and I think the, the mayor's really um, he's responded to that need. Back out on the streets, Kevin Thompson said more than police, the community has to be involved in running drugs off the corners. But if you don't get involved, speak up for what's your right, speak up for what you believe in, stand strong as a true believer, and hey, I'm not with it, I want them off my corners, I want them out my area. And if Sam Ringgold, Channel 2 News, Nightside. The ACLU has not made a decision on whether to challenge the bill in court. Council will get to work on the bill this January. Three children died this afternoon when their two-room home caught fire. The victims were the one, two, and three-year-old daughters of Joyce Dotson of La Plata. Dotson had gone to a neighbor's house just 30 yards away when the fire started about 4.30 this afternoon. She reported the fire from there, the blaze caused by an electrical overload and malfunction. Convicted killer Daniel Binnick could be headed back to Utah soon. Today, a Baltimore judge sentenced Binnick to a 30-year suspended sentence in the shooting death of Walter Sibirovsky 13 years ago. Binnick fled Maryland after the killing and started a new life helping others and the community in Utah. He returned to face justice earlier this year. In addition to the suspended sentence, Binnick faces five years probation and alcohol treatment. Plus, he'll have to tell school kids about his life. Baltimore City Sheriff Sheldon Stewart's sentencing today will force him out of office immediately. A Baltimore County judge gave Stewart a one-year suspended sentence, three years probation, and a $1,000 fine. Stewart was accused of bribing a state investigator who was looking into election law violations and then convicted of interfering with the investigation. A battle royal is shaping up over whether to build houses on piers in Baltimore's harbor. Several proposals have been submitted to the city for approval, but many of those at tonight's planning hearing were against peer housing. Both in public and in private wetlands, uh, because it's not consistent with uh, the cleanup of the bay program that was brought about by legislation that was adopted and signed into law. But our overriding concern is for the welfare of the bay as a whole and with preservation of public wetlands throughout the Bay Region. State Senator Dellis says he's going to introduce a bill to ban pier housing when the legislature reconvenes in January. At least one developer has already taken in deposits on townhomes that have not been approved yet. That would involve the piers next to the Anchorage in Canton, known as North Shores. 
The extended intermission at the Meyerhof may soon be over. The Baltimore Symphony Orchestra will meet tomorrow to discuss management's latest proposal. Musician spokesman Charles Underwood told Channel 2 News he wishes the offer came two months ago. Nevertheless, the proposal for increased pension, seniority, and scale will be considered by the musician's lawyers, and a formal response is expected this week. Former Presidents Carter and Ford are warning President-elect Bush to deal with America's economic problems. The two prepared a report called American Agenda, and it says the federal budget deficit is America's number one trouble. Mr. Bush has reaffirmed his stand, no new taxes, but so-called entitlements may be cut, and that's a big chunk of the federal dollar. Entitlements are programs like student aid, Medicaid, agriculture price supports, and others, but excluding Social Security. Also possibly ahead, higher federal bites added to the cost of gasoline, beer, wine, and cigarettes. Candidate Bush invited us to read his lips. Now, with President Bush, you might also have to read between the lines. And Vice President-to-be Dan Quayle got some advice today. The advice included using George Bush as an example. Counseling, courtesy of Richard Nixon. I was very surprised. He, he's a very different man from the uh, intellectual midget that has been portrayed in much of the media. Uh, this is a man who has strong views. He's highly intelligent. He's highly dedicated. I think he's going to make an excellent vice president. Mr. Nixon said Dan Quayle, while serving, was like a bull, likely to break some china in the shop. But he said Quayle was enough of a politician to put the china back together again. It's politics and a possible pardon for Lieutenant Oliver North. Today, the judge in the Iran-Contra case appealed to President Reagan to decide once and for all whether to let North stand trial. At risk, the disclosure of national security secrets. Judge Gerhard Gazelle was not suggesting, as some of North's supporters have, that the president consider pardoning North before he even goes to trial. A White House spokesman says the president believes the legal process should take its course and is not considering a pardon. The polls have just closed in Canada's controversial election, and Prime Minister Brian Mulroney is already being declared the winner. The trade pact that Mulroney and President Reagan signed became a major issue in the campaign. Opponent John Turner had supported killing the agreement that will phase out tariffs between the U.S. and Canada. The latest on the injured U of M mascot, that's still ahead on Nightside. Next up, we turn to recreation as our life planning project continues. Kids, Christmas is for kids. Yes, makes kids of you and me. A truck and race car by the tree. We all come to play from near and far. Uncle plays with all the lights. Cousin Mike sees racing stripes And Grandma revs the motor on the car This time of year we all turn into kids The Hess Truck and Race Car, six ninety five On sale November 28th Honey, where are my socks? Honey, where are my socks? Honey, where are my socks? At Ikea, Honey, we put our socks? furniture Honey, through three years of everyday home use in just Honey, one week Have a seat, have a seat we call our quality testing Mobile Facta. Each item has to pass the test before it wears the Mobile Facta label. Mom, can I have a cookie? 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 IKEA, the home furnishing store from Sweden. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. You're going to. The Vagabond Players in Fells Point will present the comedy Table Manners running through December the 4th. For showtimes, call 563 9135. America West, we fly with pride, we care for you. America West, we fly on wings so bright as you. America West Airlines is here with non-stop service to Phoenix, convenient service to Las Vegas, and all over the West Coast. America West, what we serve is America West. Your participating Toyota dealer announces Grand Rebate 88. A big $1,000 direct distributor rebate at participating dealers on every new 88 Toyota in stock. Make your best deal. Then get a $1,000 cash rebate on every new 88 Camry, Corolla, Tercel, and tough Toyota truck. Apply it for your purchase or keep a cool grand in your hand. See your participating Toyota dealer while you still have time. When the 88s are gone, so is the cash. This week's life planning is brought to you by your Baltimore area Ford dealers.
Tonight we continue our life planning reports, a series designed to help you help yourself. We've had tips on health, money, management, and companionship, but this week the hot topic is recreation. Scott Garceau joins us now with advice on how to cope with the stress that can sometimes get a stranglehold on us. You never get stressed up. Never. <laughs> Not, I've never seen you. <laughs> <laughs> Sally and Ken, we all fight an ongoing battle with stress, whether we're late for an appointment, stuck on the beltway or trying to balance our budgets, stress eats away at us. Tonight we meet a man who's taking care of his mind and body, and we'll give this teacher a high mark on his stress test. Well, how do you feel? I'm not telling. Let's stop arguing. Stop. That's not an answer. This is what these candidates were doing. It's At Andover High School, Dan Krimblebein's U.S. History class is one of the most popular in the school. He keeps his students interested with a wide variety of classroom activities. His goal, to challenge the minds of his young men and women each day. That's basically a reflection of his own life. Dan is a dedicated teacher and coach. But he also takes time to exercise his mind and body. He runs anywhere from 25 to 35 miles a week. He plays basketball two or three times a week and tennis almost daily. If first of all, I don't feel like I, I live a life of stress. You saw me in the classroom today, and, and I think you could probably tell that I enjoy doing what I'm doing. My students, I think, enjoy uh, what they're doing in there. So I'm not sure that stress fits in to my definition of, of my lifestyle. But granted, when I walk away from that classroom, I'm looking for other activities to take my mind away from my line of work, to take my mind off my students and so forth. And, and the arts and athletics gives me that avenue to do those things. If you take a stand, if you take a stand, you run the risk of doing what? Okay? Losing votes. For Dan, the arts are also a priority, and he equates them to both teaching and athletics. He admires actors for their hard work and dedication, and dancers for their grace and beauty. I see a really, a real direct correlation between what athletes do and, for example, what, what dancers do. The hard work, you know, the same hard work that you put into athletics, you put into the, the arts. Uh, the failure that you have to cope with in the arts, that same failure is there in athletics, and you have to overcome that failure and go on to the next hurdle. Pull it out, B, pull it out. Coaching is another form of relaxation. He's an assistant for both the soccer and basketball teams. Add to that teaching and his exercise routine, and it makes for a long day. Still, when the sun sets on that day, he still finds time to relax the mind. You know, basically by the end of, of every day, after I've taught and I've completed my exercise routine, I, I really enjoy music and reading because it's a, a way for me to escape individually you know basketball I'm playing with people tennis I'm playing with people I run in the neighborhood I'm waving to people all the time people stop and talk to me or stop me and I have to talk to them by the end of the evening music and, and reading are my way of being by myself totally and I think everybody needs to do that and don't forget you can pick up my free brochure the recreation plan it's at all Baltimore area food dealers and giant food stores tomorrow night People who love their work to the extent it's killing them. We'll take a look at workaholics. That just about kills my question when I was going to say, do you mean work can relieve stress? In some, in some regards it can, but we also can get carried away and become obsessed with our work. That's what we'll look at tomorrow night. All right, keep pushing. We'll see you on sports. Okay. If you think all the danger at a sporting event is on the field, just ask University of Maryland mascot Scott Rudolph for another opinion. The usually friendly rivalry between the costume turtle and the opponent's mascot turned violent at the University of Virginia. Has Rudolph met the Virginia Cavalier? He grabbed me and just spun me around and threw me down on my arm. And my weight on top of the arm and also his weight falling on top of me it just shattered. I heard all kind of pops and cracks and everything. Doctors say Rudolph's dislocated left arm and broken elbow will probably never be 100% again. Rudolph says he's not sure whether he'll sue the University of Virginia. And on top of all that, Maryland lost the game because of a controversial referee's call. Next up on Nightside, meteorologist Ken Phillips tells us if Keith has turned into a hurricane and uh, where that guy's headed. And he'll also tell us what's in store here at home weather-wise. We'll be right back.
possible to combine the room and comfort of a sedan with the performance of a sports car. Nissan engineers have been working on such a vehicle. Introducing the 160 horsepower Nissan Maxima. The four-door sports car. When the weather turns bad, turn to a totes. Whether it's a stylish totes hat or a sporty totes cap, rain rolls off a totes. Totes hats keep you warm and dry. Totes, the best name in bad weather. You've invested a lot of money in your shoes. Totes footwear will help you protect them through years of rain and all kinds of bad weather. And that is a very comforting thought. Totes footwear. Without them, the shoes don't stand a chance. Can you help me? With some banks, there's a huge gap between the number of services they offer and the quality of service they deliver. Can't you hear me? But there is a bank that closes the gap by never forgetting that even more important than how many services they offer is how well they deliver them. Mercantile Bank and Trust. We work hard to get things done. Can I help you? Mercantile Bank and Trust. With its 24-valve V6 engine, double overhead cams, and 220 horsepower, the new Ford Taurus SHO isn't for everyone. In fact, only a select number will experience this sport interior and performance suspension. The new limited production Ford Taurus SHO. Power in the hands of a fortunate few. Have you driven a Ford lately? Now that it's the week, of course, the sun comes the out. The sun's going to be out. But it'll stay out through the holiday, through, through Thanksgiving Day. And, and then the weekend? The weekend's going to start clouding uh -huh. up again. Let me talk to you about Keith. Oh. Keith is on the way. I don't think he's going to do much to us, except maybe a few clouds later on, but that's just about it. Outdoors right now, <laughs> we have 41 degrees for a temperature. With clear skies, the relative humidity, 64%. The wind is west at 6, and the barometer rising. We hit 60 degrees today, but it was about 1 o'clock this morning. So uh, here's how things are. Look at the 30s showing up here. Some clouds in the west, and then almost clear as you come on farther down. Now, Norfolk's still in the 50s, but everybody else chilling off nicely right now. I want you to watch this system. That's Keith, tropical storm. Moving to the west and now starting to bend back. And there's a combination of conditions around the country. Looks as if it will stay down in the southern part of Florida, not even in the central part, the way it was aimed there for a while. We're sitting up in here. Just a few clouds were drifting by, and they have moved on out. You can notice if you were watching the center, it has weakened considerably. The water in that area is quite a bit cooler than it was where it was. So even though it still has all the dampness it needs, the, uh, the spot is a little cooler. So it just isn't, it doesn't have all the chance to strengthen that it did have. That's what I was trying to say. Some rain down here. That's coming in, my train of thought. My, my, some rain coming in down here from Keith as he moves in that direction. That'll be the big thing, some soil, beach and soil erosion and some rain will be the story. This is snow up through the northeast. Here's the cold front. Came through yesterday and Saturday and brought us that rain. It's getting out of the way. It'll be down here by tomorrow. High pressure will come closer. We'll have sunshine. There'll be clouds around us, but we should be sunny most of the time tomorrow, so it'll be kind of nice. This is a big storm out in the west. A lot of strong winds and some rain and snow falling out there. Look at the temperatures tomorrow. We'll stay right in the upper 40s in the city, probably in the 50s. The rest of the area will stay in the 40s. You can see the mild stuff is well down south. My forecast now for the next 24 hours, partly cloudy skies. We're showing clear right now. A few drifting clouds around. Temperature in the 40s by tomorrow morning. 36 degrees, and we'll have uh, 56 by the time we get into the afternoon, and that is the wrong forecast. So let's get right on out of there. Yeah, that, totally wrong. I, I can't explain it, nor will I try. Here's, here's the real one for the next five days. Tomorrow, sunny. I was trying to make it fit, and it wouldn't work. Sunshine, temperature 50 degrees, down to the 32 range at night. Wednesday, more sunshine, near 50. Thanksgiving Day, 51, and we'll have sunshine at that time. I'll fall on my sword later, right? <laughs> Friday, 53, still sunny, and by the time we get all the way to Saturday and into the weekend, then we see the partly sunny skies, and the temperature will be around uh, 58 degrees what, or what so. What week is this now? Uh, <laughs> I, I think we have the right week on there, you but do? I don't know why that other is thing came up like that. Is it a full moon tonight, Ken? I haven't looked at the moon. It would, it would explain a lot of things, wouldn't it? I thought so. Thank uh -huh. you. 
Israel's ambassador to the U.S. tonight told Baltimoreans that Israel is skeptical of the PLO's latest move. Moshe Arad told the Council on Foreign Affairs that the PLO's creation of an independent Palestinian state and recognition of Israel still leaves room for interim solution. Arad says the Palestinians should be given autonomy except in the areas of security and defense. Tomorrow, the nation will pay tribute to our 35th president. It's the 25th anniversary of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Tonight, a unique vigil is being held at the Capitol Rotunda, where Mr. Kennedy's body lay in state a quarter century ago. About 500 former Peace Corps volunteers are taking part in a 24-hour vigil. They say they're marking the occasion, not by mourning, but instead by celebrating the life of a president who harnessed their youthful idealism to serve the needy of the world. There's still more ahead on Channel 2 News Night Side. Scott Garceau will have all the sports, and he'll tell us about the good old boys who are showing their underalls. I'm JBA. Over the years, I've grown to appreciate the comfort and smooth, quiet ride that Caprice can provide. If you're like me and like to travel in the comfort lane, you can do it for just $14,462. And that includes V8, automatic, air conditioned, stereo, tilt and cruise, and much more. You're invited to take a test ride. There's no pressure and certainly no obligation. JBA Chevrolet, Ritchie Highway, Glen Burnie. The good things always come easy at your nearby 7-Eleven store. Make your morning with the Washington Post and a fresh ground, fresh brewed cup of coffee. Enjoy Post sports news and entertainment with a 20-ounce cup, now only 69 cents. Save on Kodak. Right now, the 24 exposure roll of 100-speed film is just $329 and 200-speed $379. With EverReady Energizer batteries, you get two packs of CD or 9-volt batteries for $219. AA four-pack, just $269. At 7-Eleven, get the good things easy. The only thing worse than a window insulator kit that won't stay up is one that's tough to take down. Ouch! That's why you want 3M window insulator kits with genuine 3M tape from the maker of Scotch brand tapes. They're guaranteed to stay up all winter, yet come down clean and easy in the spring. No residue, no damage. Look for 3M window insulator kits. The difference is 3M tape. Get ready for Mazda's 89 lineup. Introducing new family transportation. Mazda's MPV. The Red Hot MX-6. Luxurious 929. Practical 626 and fun to drive 323. Get set with Mazda trucks. Rated number one in customer satisfaction for three years running. Go get the feel of an 89 Mazda now. Get a great deal at your local Mazda dealer today. If you're a football fan, you saw a big one kicked out there in San Francisco tonight, didn't you? Yeah, this is a big game for uh, both these teams, Ken and Sally. Redskins in San Francisco tonight with the loser of this one in big trouble as far as the playoffs are concerned. Uh, it's now late in the third quarter. 49ers had a 23-7 lead on the Redskins at halftime. John Taylor ran back a punt 95 yards, longest in 49 history for a score, but the Redskins have just scored. On a Doug Williams to Ricky Sanders pass, it's now 23-14, late in the third quarter. Both teams with six and five records coming into this one. Just one final tonight in the NBA. A good one at the Summit in Houston with Akeem and the Rockets battling Dominique and the Atlanta Hawks. Let's take a look. One member of ZZ Top taking in tonight's right. game. Yeah, John Battle going to strip Akeem here, and then he is off to the races finds Dominique, and look out below, he jams and led all scores with 29. But Akeem won the battle inside. Going to work on Moses here, blocks him not once, but boom, a second time. And Mike Woodson connects down on the other end as the Rockets go on to a 117-113 win over the Atlanta Hawks. Skipjack's goalie Don Beaupre named the American Hockey League Player of the Week today. Beaupre has won four straight for the Jacks since being sent down from the Caps Defenseman Jim Thompson was recalled by the Capitals today. In the NHL tonight, Montreal and the Rangers at the Garden. Bobby Smith lead pass to Mats Naslin. He beats Van Beesbrook on the breakaway. Montreal out to an early 1-0 lead. Rangers, Michelle Petit run Shane Corson out of action here. Corson comes back with vengeance. Watch him come back. Takes a run at everybody. He's looking for a man and finally catches up with Brian Mullen. And I mean, this is a cheap shot, gang. Sends him reeling right there. 
We'll wait for the suspension coming up on that one. No, the final wasn't 117-113, but Montreal <laughs> did win it. Final was 4-2. to two. One other game in the NHL tonight. Tom Fergus with a hat trick and Alan Bester with a shutout. Toronto over St. Louis. The final was 4 nothing. Well, the NASCAR season ended yesterday with Rusty Wallace winning the Atlanta Journal 500, but Bill Elliott winning the season's championship Winston Cup. If you watch any NASCAR racing, you've probably noticed that the good old boys are peddling a lot of products that are used by the good old girls. That's because the ladies are turning out in record numbers on the circuit, cheering on the good old boys. Top driver, Darrell Waltrip, well, he's kind of breezing around the track in a tide box, as you see, tied on the front of his car, and that, show us your underwalls, right? Uh, well, that's one of the product, and then Slender you and, and the gang and the pit crew, all these guys, including Joe Rutman, have to wear pink hats. And I know ladies love pink, but I love ladies, so pink is not all that bad. You know Joe uh, would, would not leave the house <laughs> if his mother told him to wear a pink hat, but they'll do it for the bucks, right? High school soccer playoff action tonight at Old Mill, Saverna Park, and Rockville in the 4A playoffs. Eric McClellan going to come up with the header right here. McClellan uh, going to bang it inside. Saverna Park's goalkeeper comes out, makes the initial save, but then the ball is loose, and McClellan, with a good hustle, kicks it in. Rockville wins the 4A championship. The final score, 2-1. to one. Got a few leftovers take, worth taking a look at right now. Let's take a look. First, the Gorilla. Very happy that the NBA season is underway. I mean, he's flipping head over heels down in Phoenix, but uh, tennis officials watch out down the middle. Sabatini serve, boink, right in the head there oh. to the linesman. Caught, caught him right in the head. Charles Barkley, I was the sensitive guy here, shoves Kenny Walker, <laughs> then throws the ball at him. Not enough the first time. Got to really get him worked up, angering Charles Oakley. And here, finally, our poor sport goes to Red Wings goalie Glenn Hanlon. He attacks Boston's Clint. Uh, Ken the Rat Linsman. They call Linsman the Rat, so I'm sure he had something to do with the unprovoked attack. I boys thought you'd save the leftovers until after Thanksgiving. No, we're, we'll have more then. I'm sure we will. Thanks. <laughs> in Virginia tonight, they're calling it potty parity. It's a state law to increase the number of ladies' rooms in public buildings. Right An expensive study has finally concluded what any woman could have told the lawmakers. Women take more time in the bathroom. And that means long lines at sporting events, the theater, sometimes the workplace. So the state of Virginia is responding to the study, increasing the number of women's lavatories in public buildings by 50%. Maryland, take note. That's all for Channel 2 News Night Side. I'm Sally Thorner. Cheers is next. I'm Ken Matz. Horace Holmes has your first morning news. Channel 2 News today at 6.30, and we'll be back at 5. Meantime, good night. Channel 2 News is recognized as Baltimore's outstanding news operation by the Associated Press, United Press International, and the Radio Television News Directors Association. Now, Wendy's new bacon Swiss burger and a regular icy cold Coca-Cola are only $1.99. That's right, only $1.99. The best burgers in the business and a great deal, too. If you've been looking for a Japanese touring sedan but are bothered by their lofty prices, before you consider this Honda Accord DX, consider this. The Volkswagen Jetta. A comparably equipped German-engineered Jetta is priced over $1,000 less than the Honda. With so much, or so much less, the only thing left to consider is a test drive. So come in today to your local Volkswagen dealer and test drive an 89 Jetta. It's incredible! Awesome! I hate it. It's Lionel Kitty City's Fisher Price Week, the biggest Fisher Price event in history. Save like never before on the toys that parents and kids love, like the nursery school playset, a Kitty City exclusive, now just $16.91. And this camcorder takes real videos on sale for $89.99. Looks like we'll be here the whole week. The biggest Fisher Price event in history, now showing for one week only at a Kitty City near you. The sign of Kitty City, turn it down, upside down. It was the crime of the century, and whether you were a child or an adult, you will never forget where you were when you heard the shocking news that President Kennedy had been assassinated. 25 years later, there is still controversy over who did it, why. We'll pay tribute to the man all America loved on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Oprah, tomorrow at 4 on Channel 2. Benson's political career is on the line tonight at 12 on Channel 2.